So my name is Sharon Moalam. I'm a physician and scientist and a geneticist as well. And I specialize in the study of rare diseases. My book is The Better Half on the Genetic Superiority of Women. It's a study of how women in having two X chromosomes are genetically superior to men. For the entirety practically of modern medicine, we've been using male cells, male animals, and male humans as research test subjects. And this has really led us to a male focus or male-centric understanding of the human body. And it, it's really only been recently that we've been required to use females in genetic studies and in research studies as well, especially for drug approval. So we're only now beginning to understand that there are significant differences between the sexes. It's an issue of complexity. Female cells and animals are much more complex each cell has two X chromosomes, as opposed to male cells, which only have one. And so that's an extra level of complexity to study. If you want to study both male and female, you're doubling the costs because you're doubling the amount of cells and animals and research subjects that you need to use. So many government agencies are requiring women to be included in research studies, um, but they're not requiring a, a specific number of women. And the limitation is, it's not actually telling us how much a woman or a man needs of a drug. So sex-specific dosing is not a requirement. So that leaves women who typically are more sensitive to the effects of many medications um, to be more susceptible to side effects that we only discover once a drug is released. An example actually uh, that happened recently was the, the drug Ambien, which is a sleep aid, was released to the market. There was no sex-specific dosing. The dose was the same for males and females. And yet many females started coming to the physicians and saying, you know, the, the Ambien you prescribed to me, um, for some reason when I take it, the next day, the entire day, I'm, I'm, I'm still sleepy. Eventually enough of these reports came out that um, it, it instigated a reinvestigation of the drug and a realization that women only require half the amount that, that, that men require. And, and that sex-specific dosing only came about because women were vocal enough in telling their physicians something is wrong with the drug that you're prescribing. When I was doing my medical training, I was actually taught that women are just more vocal about side effects, not that actually the drugs that we may be giving them may be making them particularly more sick. Are we overdosing them? And in fact, research now is, has been showing that um, most of the overdosing is because of this reason. Females tend to be overrepresented because they are more susceptible. We're essentially giving what's a, a male dose to a woman without taking her genetics into consideration. Men and women differ in uh, the fat composition. So um, a man and a woman of, of the same height and, and weight, a woman will have 30 to 40% more fat. And um, that extra fat changes the way the drugs distribute throughout the body. And so, um, and then the, the other reason also is men tend to be able to clear drugs faster, just like alcohol. If they're clearing a drug faster, you have to, get to give them a higher dose to maintain a certain level in their body. And for women, what happens, because they're not clearing a drug, the level increases and they're more, much more likely to get a side effect or an overdose as a result. So the dose that you actually use to treat a male is sometimes enough to poison a female. Uh, you know, a common example is acetaminophen. Taking acetaminophen at the recommended dose, men actually clear acetaminophen 20% faster than females. It just gives you an idea that all the, uh, many common, even over-the-counter drugs, behave very differently between the sexes. And yet when you get a prescription from a physician, your dose is not sex dependent. Refiguring and understanding that there's fundamental physiological and genetic differences between the sexes can help us inform and come up with new treatments that can then treat both sexes better.